Hello, welcome, welcome everybody. Hi. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am Jessica here, Jessica Jade Yoga. Um, signing on, Lola gets live uh, for a little bit of a yoga practice. Yay! Yes, Allison, good to see you here. Hi, Dasha. Hi, friends. Hi, Julie. So we're gonna um, we're gonna have like a chilled out class today. We're gonna start standing, um, but then we're gonna come down onto the ground. Um, we're gonna get into some restorations and restorative postures. Um, and then get into a little bit of breath work. I'm gonna try to keep it around 30 minutes or so. Um, we'll see <laughs> how this does. Uh, but if you are joining, go ahead and um, get whatever you need to be comfortable. I have a, a couple blocks, a blanket, a pillow. Uh, if you don't have blocks, um, there's so many things around your house that you could use. Like I'm looking around my room right now and I see a couple things that I could use as blocks. Um, so I've got like a, some thick books some boxes around that are sturdy shoe boxes that works and we'll get started in just a minute here how is everybody feeling you don't have this like rhetorical question <laughs> uh, it's been stressful it's been a um it's been a hell of a week right let's work some of that out I'm sure you guys feel some tension, you know, when you're stressed out, you get like, you know, typically a headache, uh, shoulders, oh my God, the shoulders, right? Um, maybe a backache and the whole purpose of a restorative practice is um, to move your body and to hold postures, uh, not that they're necessarily easy, but in a way that your body is super um, supported and doesn't have to try so hard to hold the posture, if, that's, if that makes any sense. So that's where the props come in handy. They help to support the body um, so that you can sit into the, the postures for a little bit longer and start to release some of that um, icky, whatever, stress, tension, all that BS <laughs> that you're holding in your shoulders, in your trunk, in the side of the body. Um, help to release some of that a little bit, right? It's not a miracle worker, but it's gonna help. Um, bring some awareness to the body and hopefully release some of the stuff we've been holding on to. Well, let's get started. Let's get started. I don't know if I like this light on or not. I think I'm going to keep it off. <sighs> yes, I feel you, girl. It has been a stressful week. A stressful week. And, like, you know, given the political climate, that just adds to everything. Like, we all have these stressful lives without any of that. So I can only imagine how we're feeling collectively. So hopefully you guys can see me. I got the round mat out today. The angle with the live in this room is really small. So I'm gonna try as best I can. I'm gonna try to angle this down a little more so that we get a good view of what's going on. And let's, let's, take, let's take our time arriving here. So grab your props and we're gonna start standing and we want to get nice and grounded here. So take a moment, maybe stand nice, comfortable distance with the feet apart, maybe hip width distance or a little wider. And soften the gaze, or close the eyes, start to notice any spots in the body that are holding on tightly, holding on to tension. Just notice them here. Hmm. We want to start to tune into the breath. What's what's the breath doing? And we don't need to change it. We're not deepening anything right now. We're just checking in, noticing. Checking in on that heart space. How how is your emotional body feeling? I like to take just a few more moments here. This is a good space to maybe ask for consent from your body, check in. And maybe it's the first time you're like, hey, body, what's going on? Hey, heart space, how do you feel? Hey, brain, quiet down for a minute. Just chill out. Can we take a minute? Can we take a minute? Can we take a moment? So just checking in. 
And if you have your hands on the body, you can keep them there. We'll just take a few deep breaths together. On the next inhale, just give your space to your body space to expand, to open up. So let the belly soften and expand. Let the rib cage open up. Feel that breath in the back of your body even. And exhale, release. Feel the way your body kind of sinks back down. The shoulders fall down. A few more breaths like this. And sigh out on the next two exhales. <sighs> One more just like that. Nice big breath. And exhale. Let that energy flow right out through that breath. Drop the hands here. Shake out the shoulders. Lift up the toes. Get nice and rooted down. Lift up the toes, maybe the ball of the feet, and kind of shift forward and backward to find that center here. And then drop the toes down. Get nice and engaged through the feet. We're going to find um, some half sun salutation. So upward salute to forward fold. I'm going to kind of give you a side profile here. So with that same engagement through the feet, inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Really reach those fingertips towards the ceiling. Expand that belly nice and big and exhale, fold. Bend through the knees nice and gently. Drop the hands down. And the hands can come to wherever they want to land naturally. And if you have blocks in front of you, I'm going to grab mine. <laughs> Just go ahead and rest your hands there. Nice and gentle. Now the legs here can stay straight. You can have a bend in the knees if you're tight in the hamstrings. But think of relaxing the crown of the head down as much as you can. On the next inhale, we're going to pull the spine long. So lift up through the chest, straighten the legs here, gaze comes down, kind of like an L shape, and exhale, fold down. Inhale, we'll come back up for upward salute. So drop the hands back, swoop them back, and inhale and lift, bending through the knees, reaching for the sky. Fingertips are really reaching up nice and active. And exhale, hands to heart center. Come back into that sensation of your feet rooting down nice and firmly on the ground you're standing on. And inhale, slide the palms up overhead. Release the hands apart, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Halfway left on your inhale. And exhale, release the hands down to the ground. We're going to find one downward facing dog. Um, <clears throat> you can use your blocks for that, and I think I'm going to demo that here today. So just if you have blocks or books, plant them down onto the ground, nice and wide, as wide as your shoulders are. So if you have linebacker shoulders like me, <laughs> take them nice and wide. Press your weight into whatever you're using, and we'll step one foot back, coming to the toes or the ball of the foot, and then the other. And you can keep those knees bent. You can set the heels down if they, if they go there, if they meet the ground. And we'll just take a moment here, full breath. Soften that belly and exhale. Drop the head down between the shoulders. And then we're going to gently come down onto the knees. So taking your time, coming down onto the knees here. We're going to get into some um, hips a little bit. So we're going to find a lunge. We're going to sit in the lunge position for a bit, <laughs> for a bit. So even if you're on carpet and the surface is soft, um, I urge you to use some padding underneath the knee because as we sit in this, sometimes um, <laughs> sensations start to arise that we don't feel when we hold the postures for a much shorter time. Um, so this is just going to help keep you present in the practice and not like, oh my gosh, my knee, or this hurts, what are we doing? <laughs> so let's um, grab for whatever support we have, if we feel like we need it. 
And I'm gonna bring this towards the back of my mat. <coughs> so coming to tabletop position on hands and knees, we're gonna breathe through a couple of rounds of cat-cow here. So we'll start with cow pose. And we want the shoulders to be over the wrists and we want a little bit of space in the mid body. So if your hands are really close and you uh, feel scrunched up, walk your hands forward just a little bit. Create some space in the middle of the body. We'll start with an inhale, dropping the belly down and letting the tailbone kind of pop up. Chest comes between the shoulders. Nice inhale. And exhale, round through the spine. Head comes down. Think of spreading the shoulder blades apart. Pressing the ground away. Two more like that. And last one. Think of sliding the rib cage away from the pelvis on the inhale, and then exhale. Think of bringing them in to hug. Very good. We're going to walk our hands back towards the body here, come to stand on the knees, and we're gonna come into our lunge from here. Hopefully this is a good position for you. Um, let's start with the right side, and I'm just gonna come off of my right knee and step it forward quite a bit. So if you step it forward here, see if you can step forward a little bit more. We're looking to get into um, extension of the opposite hip, so you should feel a little bit of opening there. So we're going to bring our hands down either to the inside of this front thigh that step forward or we can frame the foot um, with our hands or with our props here. I have my hands laid up on blocks here and I'm just going to slightly tuck my tailbone and shift my hips forward. So sitting in this lunge supported under the hands if we need it and we'll take about a minute here or so. Staying connected with that breath. If you feel like this is too much, you can lift the hips a little bit here. And just kind of tune into the sensation you're feeling in your body here. maybe after a few breaths it starts to feel a little looser a little open the extended hip flexor on the left side starts to feel a little more comfortable or not <laughs> maybe it feels tight the whole time maybe it feels like a little bit of fire send your breath direct your breath to wherever you're feeling the most intense sensation here and soften the face We'll find one more breath here. And then we're going to find a half split. So start to shift the hips up and back slightly. And we want to pull that front leg so that it's nice and straight. You want to think of digging the heel down and flexing the toes up on that front leg. And then I like to take my pointer and middle finger and bring it right to that hip um, crease of the extended leg and press back. Just gently nudge that hip back and you're going to feel a little more extension in the leg here. <clears throat> so staying up here if you'd like to, you can sit up nice and tall, maybe this is really intense for you, or you can start to kind of curl over that extended leg. Think of bringing your head down towards the knee. We just want to avoid sending this hip all the way back to that heel. So keep it lifted slightly. And we're breathing into that front hamstring. Start to shift the weight forward again, finding that lunge one more time. 
And again, framing the foot or maybe bringing the hands into the inner inside of the foot. And so we're revisiting this lunge and start to notice if, <clears throat> if you're holding tightly in your body, if you're bracing your lower back or uh, you're being really cautious in the hip flexor area. And if there's no pain there, if there's no sharp sensation, allow your body to soften and release a little bit. Remind yourself this is a safe space, this is your practice, you can always adjust if something doesn't feel right, but get your, give yourself the space, the opportunity to open up a little deeper if the opportunity is there. Ooh, start to shift out of this here and we're going to find this on the other side. So coming um, back up onto the opposite knee. Bring your hands to the ground. We're just going to step that leg back, coming back onto the knees here, lift the arms up. <sighs> Exhale, release. And we're going to step forward with the opposite leg. So left leg. Take your time stepping that foot forward and make sure you stepped it forward enough. <clears throat> hands come down. We'll take a breath or two here before we start to Think about shifting a little bit deeper into the lunge. So just kind of noticing how we feel on this side. Maybe it feels more open or tighter. And then if you have the space, tuck that tailbone under, shift the hips forward slightly or not. Your practice, your body. And breathe. And so... Sometimes when things um, are intense in our body and we're static, so we're not moving or we're moving very slowly, um, a lot of emotions are coming <laughs> to the surface. So if you're feeling any of that, if you're feeling frustration or uh, fatigue or anything, just kind of sit with it, notice it and accept it. I know that it's perfectly normal to feel these ways. Let's find another two breaths here. And on the next inhale, start to lift the hips up and we'll find the half splits on the second side. So slowly start to shift the hips back, lengthen through that front leg. Dig the heel down into the mat and think of pulling the hip back. Flex the toes up, send that hip back. Come back into that breath. Tune into the energy, the energy that's moving through your body. What are you feeling? Can you notice that when one part of the body feels fatigued and then relaxes, maybe that tension or fatigue moves somewhere else? Can you feel that moving through your body? Just kind of tune in and see what's going on. One last breath here. You are doing incredible. And then inhale, let's find that lunge again. Moving nice and slow. <clears throat> Shifting those hips forward. Let's find four breaths here. Maybe you're deeper. Maybe you're just the same. If you're comfortable, <laughs> if you don't feel the opening, let's come a little bit deeper. Last breath here. Inhale, start to lift up here. Step the leg back. We'll come back to standing on the knees here. 
Lift the arms up. Hands to heart center, exhale. Release the hands. Inhale, lift the hands up. Maybe a little back bend here if you'd like. Reaching the arms back, pressing the hips forward. And then exhale, hands to heart center. And we'll find a little child's pose here. Um, so I'm going to offer a supported version. If you have props you like to use, I love to use my pillow up underneath the torso. I've also used blocks, um, like right up underneath the rib cage or like right up underneath um, the shoulders. So you can play around with that as well. Or if you just come into a regular, a regular old child's pose, I like to bring the knees nice and wide. And then let the big toes come close together. Sometimes they touch. And then we want to shift the hips back. Hips come back to the um, heels as much as they can. Walk the hands forward and lay the body down. So if you're not using any support, you can also just stack the forearms here and allow the head to rest on the forearms. Resting on one side of the face. And again, taking a moment and just being a witness for what your body is experiencing. Is there any way that you need to change your positioning to make yourself a little more comfortable here? And let your body release. Let it fall to the ground. Let those knees open up. Let the hips sit back as much as they want. And if you're on one side of the face, let's switch sides here. And as we're in this position with our belly down, notice how the breath kind of moves through your body differently. Instead of expanding the belly so much forward, your rib cage kind of opens up from the back. So take a moment to explore how the breath navigates through your body as we kind of reposition. And maybe you practice sending the breath to the hamstrings or to the uh, lower part of the back, maybe even to the tailbone. Mm, just a few more breaths here and then we'll move on. We're so good. We'll start to walk our hands in and lift ourselves up off the ground. Super good. Bring the knees together, come back onto the knees, grab your props. We're going to find a uh, lizard. Again, so we're going to find that lunge shape again and then try to relax into it a little bit differently this time. So coming back onto the knees, we're going to walk the right foot forward. So nice big step. And so this time, instead of having um, the foot completely directly right in front of us, in front of our torso, we want to kind of heel toe it out and up a little bit. So think of sending that foot kind of to the north east corner of the mat if you're using the right foot. So out and up, we want to create space here for our body to come down to the inside of the thigh here, if that makes any sense at all. So create that space here, and then we're going to come down to our forearms. Here, I'm going to stack my pillow on top of my blocks, and I'm going to rest my forearm that way, I think. 
Let's see. Play with your space. Re reconfigure your props as needed. Yes, this is what I'm going to do. So I know the angle is not the best here. My torso is kind of horizontal because that's what works for me and my body. So if your torso is not laying down directly in alignment, um, squared off in front of your body, that's absolutely fine. Again, we're trying to get into that hip flexor of that right leg. And it might feel good to roll onto the outside of that front foot. And that gives us a little more opening in the hip and also moves that knee out of the way so it's not butting up next to our body. So take a moment, drop the head down, take some breaths, maybe some curse words under your breath <laughs> if this is intense. That's fine. Let that breath flow through you. Don't hold your breath. Keep breathing. One more breath here. And start to shift back to center, lifting up nice and slow. And from here, we're going to come into a supported pigeon pose. So, moving whatever props you're using just slightly out of the way because we'll reach for them again and i'm going to take this front foot let's step it in a little bit because it was far up there and i'm going to walk or heel toe it from the right side all the way to the left and then i'm going to start to lay that shin down so i'm using my props i'm walking my hands with my props and lowering down onto that shin and then I'm going to take one of my blocks and bring it up underneath my right hip for support. <sighs> Left leg is extended out behind me. So we're supported here. We're sitting in the pigeon. We'll take a nice breath. Sit up nice and tall. And then on the exhale, sleep. <laughs> Find your sleeping pigeon. I'm going to use this pillow to bring my forearms on. Hopefully you guys can see me. <laughs> and we'll take a moment here. This is super intense. So find your comfort, find your space. And really use your breath to explore your body. Now this is a posture that, like I said, is pretty intense in most bodies, no matter what's going on. And so just kind of understand that if you feel any strong emotions come up, that it's okay, as long as you're not feeling any sharp pain, you're okay. <laughs> so release the back glutes, release the hips, and my body, my glutes like to tense up in this posture to kind of resist um, opening. <laughs> so if you find if you find the awareness that you're doing that, you're squeezing tightly, you're tensing up, as soon as you're aware of it, just send the breath there, let it go. Your body uh, creates tension, it tightens up, it tenses up in a way to protect itself. So, you know, by having that awareness, and just reminding your body you're safe, you're supported, you're going to move in a way that works, you know, it helps a little bit. Oh yeah, you guys feeling that? Get into a space 
where the initial shock of the posture is starting to wear off, hopefully. And then you're starting to find a nice, pleasant softness. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Ooh. One more breath here. Ooh, let's start to come out of it. Plant your hands down. This is a tricky one to come out of if you're not familiar with this posture. Um, I like to curl the back toe under and really send my weight into my hands and come back onto the shin, remove the block, and then you can kind of just sit back onto the hip this way. That's probably the easiest way to come out of here. So coming out of the posture, and then we're going to find our way um, back onto our knees. And we get to do the other side, how fun. <laughs> so before we do that, come and stand on the knees and just kind of feel the difference between the side we just opened and then the other side. And you probably feel super unbalanced here, and that's normal. So let's, let's find this on the other side, stepping that left foot forward, and then letting it be out wide, again, um, northeast or northwest corner of the mat, so the knee doesn't have to be completely aligned in a straight line with our body. And we're going to find that lizard pose. So hands are on the inside of the foot. Maybe you roll into the outside of that foot. And then maybe you come down to your props. We're doing bolster today. So let me get set up here. There we go. So coming down onto the forearms, you can bring the ground as close to you as you need to. I have two blocks on the bottom and my pillow on the top. Maybe your hands come down to the ground, your forearms comfortably come to the ground. That's not, that's not my jam today, that's not where I am today. But maybe you're there. And we're just getting into that hip a little bit. Restoring some function. And maybe you notice you can get a little bit deeper after a few moments. And if that's you, feel free to adjust. Relax the face, relax the neck and the head. Yes, I feel good. I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> we'll take a couple more breaths here. We're going to move on. So on your next exhale, just visualize or imagine anything you don't want in your body anymore, anything you're feeling, you're holding on to, just visualize exhaling it out and pushing it out of your body. And then we'll start to come up, lifting up, and we're going to find our pigeon pose on the side. So coming back up, we're going to heel toe the left foot all the way over to the right side. Come down on to the shin or start to lower it. I'm going to walk my hands in front of the shin. Hand, body weight is in the hands. And slowly I'm going to set that shin and knee down, extending the back leg. Block comes up underneath the hip here, if you like a little additional support. And we'll sit up nice and tall on the side. And then exhale, we'll find our resting posture, version of this posture here. So hands, forearms come down to support or to the ground. And start to let the body release again. 
scanning for places you're holding on to. Are you clenching your butt? <laughs> Are you resisting opening up here? A lot of the times we'll lean on to the side where our knee is bent. So if you feel like you're over um, compensating for the sensation by leaning over, slowly start to adjust that, right? Bring the torso forward a little bit. We don't want to lose the integrity of the stretch here. So just find that awareness and make the adjustments that you need. And feel your hips and your legs and your upper body even getting a little heavier as they release and as the muscles release and start to surrender to the posture. And again, imagine that this, this heat that we're feeling through this left hip is burning away any of that sensation, any of that emotion that's not serving us. Or maybe it served us. <laughs> maybe it served us and it's still there and it needs to go. <laughs> maybe its job is done. And just let it go. Visually, through the breath. Emotionally, through the heart. And physically, through the body. This is the good stuff here. I'm going to take a few more breaths and we'll move on. And the next inhale, let's start to come out of this, pressing the hands down into the ground. Lifting up, maybe curling the back toe under, sending the weight into the hands. And shimming the left foot from the right side back or coming back onto that left hip. And we're going to find a seat from here. Um, we're going to find a posture called shoelace. Just to get into the hips a little more and then we will finish up with some breath work. So... You can sit directly on the ground for this. If you have abundance in your body, so if you've got like big thighs and a belly like me, I recommend coming onto a, a towel folded up or I'm going to use my bolster here or a blanket folded up. Something to lift the hips off the ground because that will give us some space for this posture. So it's kind of be a modified, supported version of this posture. So with me, I'm sitting on the edge of my bolster. So I'm not situated all the way on it, just the edge. We'll start by bringing our legs in front of us like we're going to find a cross-legged seat. Um, but before we get into that, um, start with the left, the left leg. And I'm, we're just going to kind of pull it forward. So that the knee is pointed as straight ahead as possible versus being out to the side, if that makes any sense. Um, and then the other foot is going to, the other leg is gonna kind of stack on top. So the idea here is that the knees are kind of in alignment with each other. So mine are off a bit, <laughs> they're not perfectly stacked and that's fine. We're just looking for the sensation, the stretch. So hands can be planted down on the ground I'm going to keep my hands on this knee just to kind of encourage the stretch a little more. And we'll just take a moment here. Sitting up as tall as you can here. Coming back into the breath. And redirecting your mind 
back into this moment. So as you notice, your mind starts to wander and take you on a journey. <laughs> um, the brain is incredible, right? You could be stressing out about something that you have coming up, or you could just randomly be thinking about a mistake you made 10 years ago. Like, <laughs> whatever is happening with the mind, um, as soon as you start to notice it, as soon as you become aware, just draw your attention back to the breath, back into visualizing the energy or the tension moving through your body. It's a constant struggle, a constant practice. I like to think of visualizing my thoughts as clouds in the sky and I can just watch them float by. I don't have to jump on them. I don't have to fly up there and inspect the cloud. I can just, oh, there's a, there's a thought. <laughs> it's going to go as, as quickly as it came through if you don't uh, touch it, if you don't mess with it, right? Start to release here. Soften here. Ah, extend the legs forward a little bit if that feels good. Stretch them out. And then we're going to do that on the other side. So setting up for the other side, finding your version of this posture on the opposite side. And this side is more difficult for me. So find what works for you. Another option here is if your foot doesn't reach the ground, I should have given this suggestion to you before. You can always bring a block underneath the foot if that's helpful. And again, sit up tall, find your hand placement, whatever makes sense. And come back into that breath. Allow each exhale to pull you a little bit deeper into the posture, softening through the feet, the toes, the wrists, the shoulders. I'm kind of noticing that there are a few different ways to hold a posture. You can hold it fiercely, competitively, gritting your teeth and with a lot of tension in your body, or you can hold that same posture with tenderness and softness. And there's no difference in your body, but you might get a little more of an impression on the stretch with the tenderness, right? Because you're vulnerable. You're releasing. You're giving yourself space to be as you are. And I'll be damned. Isn't that a metaphor for life, for approaching most situations in life? You can resist or you can surrender to situations that are going to come to you no matter how you handle them. They're coming at you. So try to approach your posture in the same, with the same sensibility. And we'll release here on the next inhale. Very slowly start to come out of this. And let's say situated, seated here. On, on our pillow, on our whatever support we're using. You can even sit up in a chair here if you'd like. Just a nice, comfortable seat. We're going to get into um, some breath work. Um, and we're going to do something that is traditionally called Brahmari. Um, it's also called like bee breath, like, like queen bee, like bumblebee. <laughs> so maybe some of you are familiar with this. Maybe this is your first time trying it. And I have to be honest, I always thought, for the longest time, I thought that this was kind of a weird exercise in breath work. It's a traditional one, um, but I just didn't get it for a long time. And I started practicing it again recently, and I get it now. <laughs> so um, we call it bee breath because, um, and I'll show us how to do it in a moment. We're going to be plugging our ears. So that little flappy part that kind of protects your um, ear canal, you're going to kind of press that in to the ear, kind of plug the ears a little bit. And we're going to do a low pitch hum, um, which is going to kind of vibrate or reverberate through your head and then your sinuses a little bit. And what that does is that little hum 
uh, that slight vibration, it withdraws your senses. Um, so you're really not focused on anything but that sound, that sensation. And it's a great way to kind of um, calm yourself down, soothe yourself, especially if you um, uh, have like sensory um, overwhelm. This is a great way to kind of dial back and like reset everything. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So sitting up comfortably, we're going to start. Um, and how you do this, just whatever you're comfortable with kind of varies. I'm going to use my thumbs to press in um, my, my tragus into my ear. And, and nothing crazy, just a nice gentle press. And then I'm going to rest my fingertips on my skull, right? So sitting up like this, we're going to take a nice inhale. And exhale, hum it out through your nose. And we're just going to hum at like the same pitch as your speaking voice. So you don't have to be super quiet or super loud. Just a little hum. Mm. And inhale. And hum. Mm. And so from here, if you like press your ears in a little bit deeper, you're going to feel that reverberation and you'll see what I'm talking about. So if you're just kind of like lightly touching your ears and you're like, Jessica, I don't get it. What's going on? <laughs> Press them in a little bit more and we're going to try that again. We're going to do maybe five rounds of that. And this time when you hum, I want you to take the, the back part of your tongue and gently lift it to the roof of your mouth. And that's going to um, change the humming a little bit. It's going to bring it into your sinus. So let's try it like that. If you press your tongue up too much, you're going to block the breathing, so don't do that. <laughs> and let's go. Five rounds of this at your pace. Find your bromery. You can close the eyes or keep them open. Yogi's choice. And we relax the tongue on the inhale. Finishing your breath here, your last round. Closing the eyes and releasing the arms and hands to rest on top of the knees. And just take a moment here to notice how it feels. It's almost, it's almost like um, one of those dimming lights, you know, and we just kind of turn the light down a little bit, right? Like we just dialed back a little bit. So hopefully you're feeling a sense of calm and relaxation after that short breathing exercise, and I hope you liked it. <sighs> we'll take a moment here. Um, for Shavasana, you can have a seated meditation Shavasana or you can lay out on your space, in your space, whatever you feel comfortable, um, however you feel comfortable being right now, and we'll close our class out with just a few breaths. I'm going to ring the bowl for you a little bit. And this is your moment here to Again, come back into observation of the mind and the body. Maybe take a moment to compare and contrast. Allow the breath to be natural. And I want to 
leave you with thinking or meditating on the idea of gratitude. Gratitude for your body. For your yoga practice. Whatever it is you have to be grateful for. No matter how big or little. close our class off today with the sound of Om and in yoga that's the sound it's said to be the sound of the universe and we Om to connect ourselves together through time and space um, with our community and with all other yogis practicing past present and future so you can certainly just listen and enjoy this Om or you can join in with me I'll take a deep inhale here and um, Ohm for the exhale. Ohm. That's the end of our time together. I hope you enjoy this practice. Standing up here to say hi. <laughs> Thank you guys and thanks to Lola Gitz for having me. Um, I am wearing Lola Gitz, of course. The hot pink leggings with the matching crop bra and this crop top. I'm not sure if this is available any longer, but this is all Lola Gitz. Um, again, my name is Jessica. I think most of us are already friends. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Jessica Jade Yoga. I teach live weekly, twice a week, and I also offer content on Join, which is an app you can subscribe to. So there's lots of opportunities to practice with me. Yeah, I'm glad you guys like the bee breath. It's a little weird, but I'm glad you like it. Oh, thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Friday. Um, I will see you next time. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Happy New Year. And remember, come to your breath. Come to being present in your body as much as you need. There's nothing wrong with taking a little bumblebee breath break in the middle of the day whenever you need it. So I'll see you guys around.